Did you guys know that you could sublimate on sequin? If you didn't, you might want to stick around to see how I sublimated this beautiful image onto this square pillow cover. And for those of you that already do know, you still want to stick around. Watch to the end of the video and you'll see what I did to correct an error, a hack so to speak, of one of the collection of images did not sublimate properly and I was able to correct it for a fantastic final result. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, put on your bell notifications so that you may be alerted when I release videos of this kind. Roll that intro. What's going on YouTube? I've got another exciting video for you today. Um, I'm still on the sublimation tip, so today we're going to be doing something special for my brother. He owns a pediatric practice and he is opening a new location in a different city, and so I decided to just mishmash of all the pictures I have. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is, kind of like a scrapbook method. I've got the clear picture. This is the only image that is PNG with a transparent background. I went ahead and typed the city. Uh, and this is, by the way, let me preface this, this is canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. You could make all your designs online and download it, save it onto your downloads folder and work from there, okay? So I have already downloaded this image as a PNG image, and let us go and get started. First of all, we want to go to, let's open a new tab here and go to sawgrassinc.com. Hit enter, and I'm already signed in. I wanna go to Creative Studio on the top, Click on Creative Studio. All right, it brings us to a page where we can start creating. But before I want, before I do that, I want to go to the galleries and add that image and put it as one of my favorites. So let's go to my images. All right, I want to click on Add Images. Then I want to click on the Upload icon on the left hand corner. At this point, it'll bring me to my downloads folder. Then I'm going to search for the image, which is this one. Click on it and click on open. You will see the thumbnail of that file. And then you go to the bottom right hand corner here and click on save. Once the status indicator is full, it'll now bring my image onto one of my images on my image gallery. I'm going to go ahead and click on the heart icon. That way it's saved as my favorites. And then I'm going to go from there. This image is going to go on a sequin sublimatable pillow cover. Okay. The pillow is going to be, he, he has so, sort of like a theater room for the kids. And so his goal mainly is to make sure that kids come and have a good time. They're not scared to go to the doctor. So he has a theater room where they can put comfortable seating and you can watch movies while they're waiting for him to attend to them. And so that theater room is going to have the pillows uh, nice and fancy. So now that we have the image, we want to go ahead and we click on. Okay, we go to our phone. Okay, so, so we click on our favorites. And these are the list of favorites that I've saved. So I've got the stainless steel skinny tumbler, 30 ounce, 20 ounce, uh, two 30 ounces, 120 ounce. And I've got a pillow template. And this is about a 15.75, 15.75 inches by 15.75 inches. It's a perfect square. The pillow I actually bought is a 15 by 15, but this should do and I'm because I'm not using the template. It's for instead I want to go and hit click on my legal grid paper. Okay, this is my legal paper grid portrait. And legal is eight and a half by fourteen. I do have some new sublimation paper that I purchased. It's a sub paper. We're gonna try out this paper for the first time. Purchased from Amazon of course as usual. So now that I have my canvas, I'm, and, and, and one of the reasons why I did not go, because normally I would just go to custom canvas, I click on that and I put in the 
uh, change this to inches and I put in the width, I can put the width of eight and a half by 11 or whatever customizable paper you have. I don't want to do this because it does not save once you use your custom canvas. Okay, I repeat, it does not save once you use a custom canvas. So I want it to save. Second of all, let me show you this. If I go to blank products, if you look at the templates that Creative Studio has, okay, you will see that it has something called home decor. And if you click on home decor, it has different items here. And if I type in, for example, sequin, my sequin pillow that was favorited pulls up. And if I click on that, I have my pillow here and I can align it. But let me show you the reason why I'm not going to use this. And I'm sure there's some of you um, computer gurus out there that be able to solve this problem. But anyway, not a major problem. There's always a way around it. So if I go here and I, if, if I go to my galleries and go to my images and I select that image. Now I can resize that because this is a perfect square and this is a rectangle. I can resize that to however I see fit. I want to keep that proportion that way the picture doesn't look skewed. All right. If I do that, okay. Now when I go ahead to the top right hand corner and click on my print, here is what happens. So I have my mirror on sawgrass tray one is good. Paper size I have to select or it won't let me get past this screen. I got US legal. Click on that and I'm going to go here to polyester and instead of text print R I will go into this does not have a menu item for my a sub paper but I believe it is type a that you select for the paper we're gonna leave it as high quality and go to photographic and go to vivid when I click on my print and it sends it to the queue uh, you're gonna see what the image looks like in the print manager Sometimes it takes a while to send it to the queue. It's talking to my printer at the moment. So it says print has been successfully queued. I hit my OK button. And I also do, I also have to wait again for the print manager to pop up. Okay. Now, this is what I was talking about. So my print manager here has the soil grass. It's ready. It's got the green light. It's ready to go. My material is polyester, leave it as is, high quality, which I selected in the screen before that. It is a mirrored image. When I go to my layout tab, which is the second tab, you see that I have these margins, even though I did not impose margins on that. Okay. If I, I of course, I don't want to impose bleed lines because it's going to put that dark, dark border. But I'm going to take impose margins and bleed lines off. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to Preserve Layout from Designer. Okay, and it says warning, one or more of your jobs do not fit with the current page layout settings. Okay, let's go back to Print Manager or Print Manager Performs Layout. Now, it has this space and I can't really do anything about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and I'll tell you, I'll show you the best way that I found to work in this situation. Okay, so instead of this, let's scratch that and let's just trash this. I'm going to go to blank products and under here I'm going to click on my favorites and so it has all my favorite templates that I have saved. Now the free version only allows you to save five, one, two, three, four, five, which is fine. I don't need a paid version of Sawgrass Creative Studio. So here's what we're going to do. We want to select the legal paper grid portrait. All right. And this is a better selection and I'll show you why. All right. So we're good to go. Now we have to bring that image onto our canvas and we go to galleries, my images. Here's the image. You click on it once and it fills up that canvas. Okay. Let's change that to inches so we can monitor it. And let's just leave the aspect ratio locked. Okay. So we're going to bring that image to as close as eight and a half by 14 that we can. Okay. And let's bring that there. We need 8.5, 8.5.
Okay. Looking good. Let's bring that down. Okay, so the only thing I don't like about the Sawgrass Creative Studio is that you can't physically adjust or type in the measurements that you need. You have to drag this to as close as you can and it's not as accurate. But let's see, let's just make sure this fits within the bounds of our grid. All right, so that looks good. 8.51 by 14.01 inches. We're gonna go ahead and click on the print button and you'll see the difference between this and the prior one that had the thing uh, that had the template for my square pillow all right so we've got the sawgrass 500 and it's ready to print let us go to tray one it's in tray one that's pretty good us legal my mirror is on so we're good from there we don't want to print on metal on metal we want to go to polyester and as we selected type a which is good for my a sub paper high quality we want to keep it as that photographic i'm going to change it to vivid because i believe that's a better selection in terms of our color vibrancy all right i'm going to go ahead to the bottom right hand corner and click on print it's going to send to printer q at the moment and give me confirmation of its success okay now it says print has been successfully queued i'm going to go ahead and click ok so the print manager window should pop up in a little bit okay now look at what my image looks like you see how it fills in those spaces that's pretty good right yeah if i say so myself and it's mirrored keon paragold keon pediatrics him and the kids in an advert okay so we have type a is mirrored tray one high quality let's look at our layout i'm going to leave let's see what's the difference does it make a difference yeah it kind of fills it up a little more okay but I'm going to keep it as print manager performs layout because I like that it doesn't chop this little girl's arm completely off so um, we're good with the layout jobs is lined up for one color vivid want to make sure that's vivid and not photographic even if it is photographic Photographic is nice, but not as great as vivid in terms of the color representation. And I don't want other because I don't need to print the file. I purchased my uh, this A sub paper legal size eight and a half by 14, 120 grams from Amazon, and it's at reason. It's it's fairly reasonably priced. It's um, it comes with 110 sheets, and um, I've had some good. I've heard some good things about it. So. Uh, it talks about the key applications, transfer and all kinds of polyester, benefits and properties, extremely fast drying, excellent line sharpness. So uh, I'm excited to work with this um, this paper and I hope hopefully my colors come out vibrant and as vibrant as possible. So when I transfer it onto my pillow cover, uh, it looks professionally done. All right, guys, a sub sublimation paper grab you a pack and of course I'm going to be using my Sawgrass SG 500 printer okay and this printer is set up traditionally for eight and a half by eleven as this is tray one with no bypass tray and as you can see pull that open I have my standard size US letter eight and a half by eleven Today, I'm not gonna be using that. I'm going to be using my brand new A sub eight and a half by 14 legal size. And the way to do this is that paper is a little too long for this tray setting. So what you do is you pull these two tabs out here and one here and pull that out just like so. And then fit this back, push that back in that, in that slot. And on this side, the other slot, boom, ready to go. All right, there's a tray set to accept my eight and a half by 14. Okay, now I'm gonna open this up. As you can see the back of the paper, the non-printable surface says ASA, so you know exactly what side to put. And this is going to go into the tray one 
face down. That means my A sub non-printable side is going to be facing up and I'm going to feed it through this way and it's going to print on the reverse side. All right, let me load this tray and uh, let's get let's get it moving. Okay, so I have taken my legal size paper out of its packaging and I wanted to put it side by side with the text prints R paper that comes with your sawgrass printer from Heat Transfer Warehouse. Okay, clear that out. And as you can see, in terms of thickness, they're about the same thickness, except this is a little on the glossier side, smoother side than this. This is a tad bit grainy. And as you can see, this is more of an eggshell off-white compared to its competitor or counterpart. All right, so we'll see how that comes out. Now, let's take this over. And remember I told you to take the tabs out and make that longer. I just want to fit one sheet at a time and one sheet at a time. So it's advisable not to put all your sheets. If you're going to use one, just print one and put one in. So I'm going to flip that to where my A sub non-printable side is facing up and slide that in just like so. Okay, Let me adjust that right there. As you can see, it goes all the way and it fits in there. And of course, it's going to close properly. It doesn't look like it will, but it won't close all the way. Boom, right where it sits in that spot where the green tabs are is where it ends. And it feeds just like so. I'm gonna pull that out to catch my paper when it comes out. And we're ready to start our print job, guys. Printer is connected and it's online. We have already loaded our paper legal paper in our printer so let us go ahead and click on our print okay my printer is getting ready to print with no error messages sometimes you might get an error message because it doesn't identify your paper size especially if you've been using um, us letter at eight and a half by eleven so all you have to do is go in here and actually select your paper size manually on the printer touch buttons so my tray is set as you can see i extended it by clipping that from here and moving it to this notch and putting it back in that hole the same with the other side and so since my paper is longer than the actual standard size for this printer it sits comfortably in here And this is my first time using this legal paper. I'm really in love with big designs, so this should be fun. Okay, and here is what our image looks like. Actually, not bad at all. Okay, and as you know, it's usually not as vibrant as when you actually print, when you actually sublimate on your substrate. It's usually better looking. Okay, so that's what we have for now. Let's go ahead and get our pillow cover ready for sublimation. All right, so I got to heat it up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm going to do that for 50 seconds. Um, I got my image here ready, and here is my pillow cover. It's actually a sequin pillow cover with gold, and the sublimated bowl side is the white side. Just gotta make sure all the pieces are laying on the white side and have no gold pieces flipped the incorrect way. So I've already done that, got it prepped. Uh, I got my lint roller here ready. Um, for, me to, um, for me to lint roll, take any excess dirt or take any lint or possible uh, things that might interfere with the image and um, just gotta wait for my heat press to heat up to my set temperature and I'll be ready to go. All right, almost at 400 degrees. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna get my lint roller and just go over this one time. I wanna make sure I get any particulates out of the way so that my image lays on something nice and clean. And I have parchment paper on the bottom of this just to protect my heating, my uh, pad underneath. And, okay, got that out. Make sure my whites are facing. 
Oh. Okay, on the edges I still have the gold, but that's fine. My image is going to lay dead center. So, I should fit right here. Okay, I'm going to put that down there, and I'm going to use my heat resistor tape to tape that right down center. See if we're good enough. Okay. Yeah, let's get that right there. Okay. Okay, and you don't necessarily have to tape it, but I want to tape it. Um, I don't want it moving around. I want to prevent ghosting. Uh, not too much tape, just to, enough to keep it in position. So I'm going to do the just the corner edges. what I meant to say okay all right I think that's good to go parchment paper Sheet. Make sure that's in place. Okay, got that covered. Push that in. Temperature set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 50 seconds. Let's go for a little firmer pressure. All right. Good to go. So my heat press tends to drop temperature, even though I set it for 400, <clears throat> it dropped it to 397-ish, 96, now it's back up to 400, but I let sit for, I mean, I did 50 seconds, but I left it for maybe 53 seconds, so let's see what we have here. Okay, wash the paper out, keep a little hot. And look at that, guys. Wow, wow, wow. That is so crispy. No, oh, that Perigord is not as clear. I probably should have used a different color in my um, Canva. Perigord doesn't show too well. But, look at that, guys. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna switch over to my camera and give you a close-up of my effect. All right. So, had a chance to sleep over this, and um, this design, I'm not, uh, it, it sublimated prop, uh, well, everything, everything except for this. So this is a glow type font. Um, I, I think that's probably the last time I'm gonna use a glow, <laughs> glow font, font for sublimation, but it didn't necessarily, uh, it's not very sharp in terms of the color, so I'm gonna do something to correct it. Um, what I did is I went on Canva and I went to the actual design that I had saved on Canva and what I did is I selected just this, uh, you know, whatever font this was, I duplicated it, wrote it out. Okay, so I duplicated the font and switched it to a black without the actual uh, glow feature. And this is the outline of the font. Okay, it's mirrored, so that's why you're seeing it this way. So I'm gonna see if I can place this over this Paragold. Paragold is a city in uh, Arkansas. So I really want that to show because that's his Paragold location. So I want it to be obvious. So 
what I'm going to do is tape this on, line it up and tape it on here so it, it, uh, I can sublimate one more time. Hopefully this works and then sublimate for 50 seconds again. All right. So I got some towels. First, let me put some tape right where I think it belongs. I'm gonna have one here. that lined up. Let me put one more piece of tape just so it's really, really secure. Actually, I'm just going to put more. So I'm going to put one on the edge here and one on the edge here and one more on the bottom edge here. Okay, and now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this folded towel. Okay, fold the towel and I'm going to put it underneath so that whatever is raised, which is just the parable word is the one that gets most of the heat, so no need to protect it. So let me reduce that. Okay, right there. So as you can see that that part of the power gold is raised. I'm gonna reduce my pressure. Actually, let me take this to the edge over here, just so it's dead center, because I, I, I think the majority of the heat on this heat press is in the center. So that's what I'm going to do. That's raised. All right. Then I'll put some parchment paper on it. Use my pressure a little more. Teflon sheet. Take it in there and press. 60 seconds instead. Let's see what, what that does. Okay, let's pull that out. Take my Teflon sheet out. Take my parchment paper out. from underneath and it looks like it did. Let it cool for a little bit. Turn my heat press off and let's take that out. Alright, let me take that out. See what it did? Ooh, that is way better. Man, okay so Still some ink left, but I'm good with the way it looks. I mean, look at that. Okay. Now the outline of Parago shows with a little bit of glow in there. So that's kind of the effect, the way it looked on a computer to begin with. So I still um, preserve that effect. And it didn't matter whether, it, whether or not it lined up as much as, as long as I had the outline. And then the rest of it just has a glow feature to it. All right. I'm really pleased with that result. And that's how you correct a mistake done with sublimation. All right. All right. So guys, here is the actual pillows that I bought again from Amazon to stuff my piece, my pillow cover. So my pillow cover is 16 by 16 and these are 18 by 18 pillows. And apparently they should fit in here so this should fit in here it's this small they're actually four in this pack um, it's vacuum sealed so uh, i'm supposed to cut it open and watch it fill up all right let's do that all right guys i've taken these pillows out of the vacuum sealed wrap letting them to sit for a little bit see how much they fill up 
starting to fluff up already. Okay. So not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay. Uh, I am going to let it fill up, give it about a minute to two minutes, and I'm going to stuff my pillow in my pillow cover. Okay, let's do it. Guys, I'm gonna be real on this. The spirit of transparency. This is amazing. Really love it. I stuffed the pillow with the, I stuffed the pillow cover with the pillows I bought. Um, and it is just great. I mean, you could see the sequence. You could turn that white side. The other side is gold, so it's gonna be a surprise when I give it to my brother. I'm gonna make it all gold, and he won't know, and I'll tell him, just uh, go ahead and flick that the other way. And then it will reveal this beautiful image. Okay? So, again, these are 16 by 16 pillow covers. And the pillows are 18 by 18, perfect, two perfect squares. So the pillow is bigger than the 16, but it is recommended that you get the pillow bigger and 18 inches will fit just like it is now. And as you can see, it's fluffed up nice and poofy with that nice gold look to it on the other side. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Woo, see you later.